Okay, welcome back folks. Today I wanna to return to the 6.5 Grendel. Now the last couple Grendel videos we've made have been very successful. We've been shooting the 140 grain Hornady match boat tail hollow point. And we found that my barrel really, really loves those heavy bullets. Today I wanna to return back to the normal Grendel bullet weight class and do some testing with the 123 grain Sierra Match King. Now the first, the first Grendel I built, the 24 inch Brownells barrel, really loved these bullets. I've got a big stockpile of them. This was kind of my default testing bullet for my Grendel. But the performance with these has been very disappointing so far in my new Faxon barrel. We shot some, tried a few things back in the initial, like the barrel break-in video, and the groups weren't awesome. So that's why I wanna come back to these guys and give them another shot. The powders for today is going to be uh, IMR 8208 XBR and Alliant Power Pro Varmint. I wanna switch things up with primers as well and try out the Federal Gold Medal Match primers, the GM 205Ms. I recently got a hold of some of these and wanna give them a try. They've been hard to find for a long time, but finally got a hold of some. And today's brass is going to be new brass. This is brand spanking new Hornady Grendel Brass. Now I have run these guys through a sizing die to make sure the neck was just right. So they're sized and ready to go. I'll just hit the, uh, the case mouth with a chamfer tool really quick and we'll be ready for priming on the brass side of things. So the actual load data is gonna come straight from Sierra's 6.5 Grendel load data. They released it a few months back on their website. I'll have a link down in the description if you haven't been able to see it yet. But so IMR 8208XBR, they show a max charge of 27.5 grains. Let's shoot up to that max. We'll shoot three tenths of a grain increments. That puts us starting at 26.3. With PowerPro Varmint, they show a max charge of 29.2 grains and we'll shoot up to that max. We'll do three tenths of a grain increments and that puts us starting at 28.0 with Alliant Power Pro Varmint. So does that cover everything? I think it pretty much covers everything. Like I mentioned for the brass, I do need to hit the inside of the case mouth with the chamfer tool, just a touch, and then we'll be ready for primers. All right, so I'm just finishing up priming. These federal primers feel really nice in this new uh, Hornady brass. So no problems there. So now it's time for some powder. All right, so I've spared you most of the powder measuring here. Just finishing up the last charge. Both of these powders have pretty good case fill at the top charges, but it's certainly not excessive. I don't think we're gonna have any compressed charges or if we do it's just going to be just barely compressed so that's it let's move on to bullet seating all right so i'm using my forster ultra micrometer seating die today i've got it installed ready to go got the adjustment backed out so let's get this guy dialed in 2.260 is our target Yeah, I think I got it dialed in here. I might have gone a thousandth or two too short. These 123 grain Match Kings do have pretty decent consistent me plats. So the overall length usually doesn't uh, vary a ton. So there's a 2.261, 2.259, 2.258, 2.259, good. Yeah, and with the bullet comparator, the cartridge based to O-Jive number is coming up 1.647 on all of them here in the first row. So let me jump forward to our max charge with 8208XBR. Let's see if this guy is compressed. I didn't really hear any crunching. I'm not really feeling anything moving. It's right out of full case. See if it's enough to affect our overall length. 1.648, so if it has, it's only by a 
thousandth of an inch. Try one more. Yeah, 1.648 on that next guy as well. Seed a couple of them from the Max Charge of Power Pro Varmint. And once again with this, not really feeling anything moving. But no problems here either, 1.647. So it looks like with both powders, we've got a nice full case, but it's not enough to affect our overall length and the bullets themselves were not getting marked up at all by the seating stem. Maybe just the slightest little mark there, but definitely nothing that will affect anything. So good, that's pretty much it. I'm not gonna crimp these or do anything else here. So let me get the rest of them seated and we'll be ready to hit the range. All right, folks. We are shooting at 100 yards today. We're going to start out with IMR 8208XBR. First charge is 26.3 grains. The gun has got an 18 inch Faxon heavy fluted barrel. I do have my suppressor threaded on and the magneto speed chronograph on here. Honestly, we found early on with this barrel, it actually shoots better with the suppressor and the chronograph on there than it does without. So I'm hoping for some good groups today. Let's get started. So the gun is 100% cold right now. It's a cold, dirty barrel. I haven't taken any warm up shots, so we'll see how it goes. All right, that's a pretty darn good start. Good looking group, good looking standard deviation number. All right, so our brass looks good. Everything's good. Moving right along, 26.6 grains is next. All right, so I'm really liking what I'm seeing so far. Another halfway decent group. Another single digit standard deviation number. Looks like this Federal Gold Medal Match and 8208XBR are gonna be a pretty good uh, primer and powder combo. Maybe. Next up, 26.9 grains. All right, so I'm starting to see just a little bit of pressure on the brass. Had a couple from that last group, just got, you know, some little round marks from the ejector. But nothing I want to freak out about yet, so we're going to go ahead and move on. 27.2 grains is next. Okay, so this string of standard deviation numbers is really impressive. And our groups haven't been terrible. So the brass on that last group also, you know, seeing some ejector marks, but it's nothing I'm afraid of yet. So yeah, whatever. We'll go ahead and finish this guy off and go ahead and shoot this 27.5 grain load. When we're back at the bench looking at the brass, you guys can decide for yourself whether I should have stopped or moved ahead. Whatever, here we go, 27.5.
All right, that's probably the best five standard deviation numbers we've ever seen on one target. So we already know 8208 XBR is a good powder. So this just further proves that. And it's got me pretty excited about this federal primer. I don't know, man. I'll tell you another thing that probably has something to do with it is, you know, this is brand new brass, nice and softly annealed new brass. So a good consistent powder, nice soft brass, and a good primer. I guess that's the formula for good standard deviation. Okay, next up is Power Pro Varmint. We're starting out at 28.0 grains. Let's see how they do. Okay, not a terrible start. Another good standard deviation. And the brass looks just fine. So 28.3 is next. Twenty eight point six. Okay, next is 28.9. Yeah, so the groups are kind of opening up here a little bit. The brass is still looking good. A lot less ejector marking than we saw with 8208 XBR at these velocity levels. So we're moving on. Last up, 29.2 grains. All right, good deal. The brass on this last group here did start showing just a touch of ejector marks. So it looks like we took both of these powders about as far as I would want to take them. Good deal. Let's get back to the bench, talk it out. Okay, folks, time for a look at the brass. And what I want to start with is that third row. This was our middle charge with 8208 XBR. This is where I first started seeing just the slightest little bit of an ejector mark here and there. There on that guy, and yeah, it looks like up there on that dude. So it certainly wasn't bad, but it just started to show. Here is the next row, which was our fourth charge of 8208 XBR. You can see a little bit more pronounced. There's that guy, and yeah, that guy, and that guy, and somewhere on that guy, maybe. So it's still not bad. Primers are nice and round, no other problems, but just started seeing a little bit of that. Okay, hidden, here's our max charge. I've tried to orient it at the top on each of them, pretty pronounced on all of them, and all five were this way. So we kind of saw the full progression here with 8208 XBR. I don't feel like we got into a danger zone or anything, but I just wouldn't want to go firing after firing at those charge weights, right? That would, uh, that would chew up your brass 
I'm sure. So I didn't really see anything with PowerPro Varmint until our Max Charge. These are both uh, pieces from the Max Charge of uh, Varmint. There's a little guy right there and a little bit on that guy as well. But nothing to freak out about. But I think that's as far as you'd want to push it maybe. All right, let's take a closer look at the groups and we'll start with 8208 XBR. Our best group of the day was the first group. And I'm pretty happy with the results here with 8208 XBR. The first four groups, all of them pretty decent. And that last group, you know, four out of five, we just had that one high flyer. But otherwise, these were shooting pretty well. Not quite as good as we've seen with the heavier bullets we've been testing recently, but not bad. Like I mentioned on the range, I think this is the best set of standard deviation numbers we've ever seen on a five group target like this. So extremely consistent velocities. So going by the pressure signs we saw on the brass here, it looks like for my barrel, a max charge of 27.0 might be about the place I should cap it going forward, at least at this overall length. So overall, I'm happy. I'm happy with 8208 XBR today. So next is Power Pro Varmint, and the groups just kind of, they just weren't as good. You know, towards the end, I started wondering whether maybe it was barrel heat, but I took a pretty good break between the 8208 XBR groups and then the Varmint groups. I took like a 20 or 30 minute break, walked in the house, let the gun cool down, rested my eyes a bit. So I don't think this was barrel heat related, but just looking at the whole target, all 10 groups, it just, things just went from good to not so good gradually as we went along shooting today. But I think in reality, it just, you know, Power Pro Varmint just didn't shoot as well. Standard deviation numbers were still really good. Not quite as good, but still pretty good. We did get a good bit more usable velocity with Power Pro Varmint, right? Like we made it all the way up here to 2456 and just started to see the very beginnings of pressure. When we saw those same pressure signs with 8208 XBR, we were only at 2374. So basically Power Pro Varmint gave us about 75 feet per second more velocity today. Was that confusing enough? Kind of confusing. All right, so I think that pretty much covers it for today. We're gonna to be coming back to the Sierra Match King here. I'd like to find a powder that shoots it well in our fax and barrel. You know, 8208 XBR, these, those were certainly serviceable groups today, but we'll keep searching. Maybe we can find some powders that are even better. I've also got the 123 grain Lapua and I've got some 123 grain Hornady ELDs. I need to pick up some more 123 grain Hornady SSTs. So there's still a whole lot of work to do, you know, down here in this 120, 123 grain weight class with our new fax and barrel. So we're just kind of getting started. All right, so that's it for the important stuff, for the shooting stuff today. And for an update on the channel stuff, if you watched my last video, it was a 224 Valkyrie video. That video, I uploaded it not only to YouTube, but also over to Daily Motion. We're on the hunt for an alternative platform with the new gun channel rules that are coming along. I'm not really sure how that's gonna affect me yet. And I wanna be prepared by uploading to other platforms outside of YouTube. The test with Daily Motion in the last video, it went pretty well. The site worked well. A lot of people mentioned that it worked well with their, their apps or their devices they use to watch on uh, their television. So it was mainly all good. What I didn't like is they run a lot more commercials. It was a 20 minute video. I think there were commercial interruptions every five minutes. Now here on YouTube, I get to control that. I control where there's an ad break. I usually put one in the middle of my videos, but over at Daily Motion, it was a lot more than that. And that was a little bit annoying. Outside of that, however, we'd have to call it a pretty uh, successful test. I was planning to use this video to test Twitch, but I still don't have my Twitch account straightened out to where I can upload. So I'm not gonna upload this video anywhere else. So that's kind of where we stand. In the next couple videos, we'll, we'll do more testing at other sites, but for today, it's just YouTube. So that's about it for today, folks. I've had a whole bunch of uh, people sign up for Patreon over the last couple weeks since all of these new rules started coming down. So I really appreciate all of the support and I think that's it. I'll see you guys next time.